people. What's up? I'm the Hobby Gamer. Thanks for stopping by. So, beer review day. I teased on Twitter about uh, something called Double Down Trips, and I'm going to go back on my word. Double Down Trips, meaning I was going to review three double IPAs. But the ones I bought are all bombers. I can't open three bombers in one video. Either I drink them all, bad idea, or, you know, they go in the fridge. Yes. I just don't want to do that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to split into three. This is part one, and we're going to do, as the title says, um, Lost Coast Fog Cutter. And then um, we'll do a, a bonus. I've got a regular IPA here. So we'll do a bonus on that one. And that's a can, believe it or not, which I like this. I like the cans coming back. So... Um, I really got to stop moving in away from my microphone. Okay, guys. Anyway, tagging Marley's Mutts today. It's a dog rescue I work with for volunteer, blah, blah, blah. Marley'sMutts.org. Go check them out. Um, always doing a lot of cool stuff. And um, once again, my Lucky Luke goblet from Lucky Luke Brewing in Palmdale, California. I've not even met these guys. I've had their beer once, but I just like promoting the local guys. I need to get by their place. So I'm going to tag them on this one because I'm pretty sure they're on social media. So I'm going to tag them, and um, I'm going to start a conversation with these guys. Anyway, so let's get right into it. We're doing the Lost Coast Fog Cutter. Lost Coast is California. It's Eureka, so it's up a little ways. It's not a Southern California brewery. Lost Coast um, is well-known. Um, I don't drink a lot of their beers. Not that I don't like them. I just don't you know. There's only so many beers you can drink, and there's only 10 billion kind. So this is a what they, you know, it's an American IPA, of course. It's brewed in America, and it's a American style. Um, it's not a West Coast style, surprisingly. It's um, it's rated with nothing on Beer Advocate. Doesn't mean anything. It just means um, people don't drink it, people don't review it. It's not. Um, it's it's weird when you see this kind of stuff on on Beer Advocate, and I don't understand why. I don't spend a lot of time. Uh, crawling through Beer Advocate. I need to. I need to learn more. And every time I um, review a beer, um, I learn something, especially when I got um, Beer Advocate to refer to beforehand. And like I mentioned in my other videos, I don't go to Beer Advocate to be persuaded. I go there to see what other people say because I like to see if I um, taste the same thing, smell the same thing, see the same things. Um, but I'm going to give you what I taste, see, feel, hear, whatever. There's more senses. There's six of them. Anyway, if I mean five, the sixth sense. So anyway, let's go right into it. This is the fog cutter double in a bomber. Um, and it's true like a double. It's 8.7% alcohol. Okay. So that's, when you get a double or imperial, that's generally what they're talking about. It's um, fermented longer. I don't know if that means they add more yeast or sugar or both. Um, let me read what it says on the bottle for you guys, and then we'll get into it. True hop lovers, get ready for a great ride. Experience our Fog Cutter Double IPA with 80 IBUs, international beer units. No need to white knuckle the bars. The bitterness is in perfect balance with malt flavors and aroma. Enjoy the bright aromatic citrus nose from extra hopping, extra dry hopping. With Cascade Centennial Crystal Chinook and Citra Hops. Cut the fog and rock on. Um, so that little note about the hops being balanced um, is something... Ooh, Lost Coast. I don't think I have a Lost Coast beer cap. That balanced thing, I mean, when you see a double and, you, and, it's, and it's from the West Coast, you immediately think... As I say, the kick in the teeth hops. And I love it. But you think that, but what I've read is that that doesn't happen with this beer. So let's pour it and we will start our review. All right. So this is straight out of a bomber into my uh, Lucky Luke goblet. Okay. Amber. Amber to orange coloring. Um... A good quarter to a half inch head just from that pour. I'm not getting a lot of citrus, 
but and the hops aren't jumping out of out of the out of the head. But that's okay. Let's taste. <clears throat> okay. A lot of citrus right off the bat and not hop forward, but definitely finishes with a nice balanced hop. I agree with that. Yes. Oh, wow, that's really nice. See, I, you know, I always talk about the San Diego County, Southern California, West Coast IPAs and the way they don't, they do what they want. Look at the, uh, look at the nice legs on there. Very, it's, it's almost creamy. It's hanging onto the side. Very nice. Um, I was talking about, um, you know, like San Diego counties, even their regular IPAs, not even their doubles, will have a a um, more pronounced hop forward flavor. That's by design. That's what you can expect when you get something from San Diego. Um, this is, I would definitely say this is a West Coast IPA. Um, the carbonation is for me, about as perfect as you can get. Um, I like a lot of bubbles, but I don't like it hanging around. Um, Cause I still, I want the crispness, but I don't, I don't want it to ever feel dry when I'm drinking an IPA. <clears throat> I don't, that's just my preference, but I'm loving the lattice work on the side there. Look at that. That's awesome. Well done. So um, I think this is a limited edition. Let me go back to the review here. Yes, brewed once. Um, I like it. Well done, Lost Coast. There's a reason why you're popular. And that's then that's good. And they're not a small brewery. They're, you know, they they ex I shouldn't say export. They they sell all over the country, I'm sure. So this is um, a very, very complex flavor for a large craft brewery. Okay. All right, so that's Lost Coast Fog Cutter Double. I will be finishing this bomber, I promise you. But we need to move on. Um, let me get another, I, I can get this other one up. I haven't even looked it up yet. Um, what I'm gonna bring to you is, uh, hold on, let me get it up here. <clears throat> so there's a, a brewery in Salt Lake called Winita, I believe that's how you say it. U I N T A, Winita Brewing. And um, let me get up their other beers because the first one I had from Winita was their Detour. And that's from a um, recommendation from a bartender friend of mine who loves, excuse me for the beer burp, um, who kind of broadened my horizons with IPAs. And um, Detour was a go-to for him for a while. I don't have a Detour. What I have is my favorite when eat this beer, Hopnosh. Okay, so Hopnosh is it's just it's an IPA. It's not a double. It's not an imperial. Um, it's got a 90 on Beer Advocate, which is you know if you're talking about the internets, people. You know can be cruel and but you know people that review beers tend to be pretty um pretty level-headed i hope um <clears throat> but i i look in here and we see some most people are giving it below a four or right at a four um i'm not gonna read these too much i'm um, just looking for something to stand out let's see here's one that's 4.39 and what did they give it um Cloudy orange and frothy whitehead. I'm not going to pour this one. I'm drinking from a can because they sold it to me in a can. So we're not going to know the color of this. We'll have to take the word for these guys. Um, I've had Hopnosh before on tap. <clears throat> I really like it. But they had a little six-pack of cans. So here we go. So we can't do, unless I empty out that, I should have brought in another glass. But I'm not doing it. Um, so we won't be able to do the look. 
and the smell. You can't get a ton out of the can, but citrus, of course, but not orangey, but more lemon or grapefruit, maybe. I don't know, but let's go with um, let's go with the taste. So coming off the fog cutter, shifting my mouth and my brain to this this balanced, um, actually a tiny bit more hop forward than the double, but not as bold when it finishes. Um, I can definitely get the refreshing citrus in this one. Yeah. Refreshing is a good one, and I'm getting just that finish on the back of the tongue with a little bit of tart bitterness from the hops. Let's see what kind of kind of hops they say in here. I don't know. Not that I'm going to learn what's good and bad. It could take me some years. Um, I would I would agree with the 90 because I would I would rate this in the four range, four and a quarter. Uh, most of the ratings, I should say most, all the ratings I do are on untapped. And they're a lot less refined than Beer Advocate. They just, boom, you put out a number, take a picture of your beer, and you and you type something. And I'm barely doing that. So I like this Hop Nosh. always have. This is probably the fourth or fifth time I've had one. And it's, I call it refreshing. This This would be a great summer IPA. Yeah, so being that it's in this really cool looking can, it's definitely got a, um, it's designed to be refreshing. I like that. So those are my beers. So we're gonna do this as part one of my double down, um, double down trips. I just made that up like within like four seconds of saying it on Twitter. <clears throat> so my Lost Coast Fog Cutter Double very good, very balanced, um, not hop forward, but plenty of complex hops afterwards, plenty of um, citrus up front, and not tart bitter, but um, full, I don't know. Like when I think of citrus, there's, you know, I think of like orangey, like orange or orange peel citrus, which I think is a full citrus flavor, because there's something that there's more to it than like a lemon or a grapefruit where lemon and grapefruit, you're getting more, um, not bitter, but real sharp citrus. You know what I mean? So there we go. That hop nosh surprisingly is 7.3% alcohol. Now that I'm looking at the can, it's more than I thought, but here's the thing. You remember I reviewed that, that, uh, Bosun last week. Neither of these, I've got an 8.7 fog cutter double. I can't taste alcohol and I can't, I didn't breathe it through my nose. It's completely masked that alcohol flavor, that alcohol sensation. It's just gone. So, um, you know, we talked about with the bosun, um, um, how you can, you know, for two bucks, you, you know, I got that bomber for like 224 or whatever. But for, for a buck or two more, you're into a, a much a much better beer. So anyway, I'm going to stop there. I am the Hoppy Gamer. Please subscribe. Please share this with your friends. And uh, if you comment um, on Twitter or anything, make sure you make sure you tag the brewery. I want to make sure I give them a fair shake because I'm drinking their beers and saying things about their product. So yeah, um, tomorrow Super Bowl Sunday. And I think I told you I'm pulling for the Broncos. And I'm just going to stop there. You're probably not going to watch this until Sunday or later. We'll know who wins. Um, but I can make a prediction. That's what I'll do. Let's make a prediction since this will go down in the annals of history. <clears throat> so my prediction for the Super Bowl, and it's not very specific other than I think the Broncos are going to win. Um, I think the key of the game is the... A twofold, twofold play by Denver defense that can shake Cam Newton to the point where he's not scoring 30 plus. Okay, 
if they can do that, and that is um, if, where, and Smith, right? Smith, is that his name on the other end? Am I, getting that? I might be getting his name wrong. If those guys can break the blocks and get to Cam Newton. So Cam Newton's very mobile. He's going to get outside. So they need to push him outside and make him rush the play. He's going to get yards. But if they could do that and either sack him or rush him, he's forced to throw on the run. That's when the secondary for, for Denver um, is the second part of what I'm saying. If they play the way they played against Tom Brady, they were on those receivers like white on rice. If they do that against Cam Newton's um, receivers, I think Denver now is going to be able to keep the Panthers from scoring 30 plus. Third part of this trick is now Denver's got to score. Um, Peyton's not thrown a ton of touchdowns this year. He's you know thrown his share, but it's not been a stellar, you know, whatever you know, 50, 60 touchdowns, whatever whatever a high number is. <clears throat> so it, it's got to happen like that. Any one of those things falls apart, and I think the Panthers score too many points, and I don't think Denver can can overcome that. But I think it's going to happen. Um, as I always say about the NFL, I hope the refs just stay out of it. Call it when it's blatant, otherwise let them play football. And um, yeah, we don't want to end. We don't want to end Peyton's career because most likely this is going to be it for him. We don't want to end this on a controversy with some stupid. I don't know, something stupid. Anyway, I've talked too much. I'm already at 17 minutes. I wanted this to be like 10 or 11 minutes. So anyway, Hobby Gamer, please subscribe. Check me out on Twitter. Check me out on Facebook. Um, they'll be at the end here. Take it easy. Bye.